let's um, do this example again. We've seen it before. We've got the same vector field, bold f. We've got the same surface, same bounds on x and y, so exactly the same surface here. And we, we want to find the flux inward toward the z-axis. But this time, instead of writing it as a level set, I'm going to solve for x as a function of y and z. So if I do that, I just add x to both sides of this equation, and I find that x equals z minus y. So x is some function of z and y. OK, so now if you remember our surface, was looked like this. Turn it back here. So this is what the surface looked like. If we're writing x as a function of y and z, we want to figure out what's the domain of that function. And if we look down the x-axis, we can see if we look straight down the x-axis that the domain is this parallelogram here. So we have y between 0 and 2. And then this forward edge of the surface and this backward edge of the surface the shadow they cast in the yz plane are two parallel lines. So we'll just to set up the bounds for the, for the domain of integration. We set up the bounds for this parallelogram, which is the shadow that this surface casts in the yz plane. OK, so now remember, our, our surface looks something like this. It's coming forward at us like that. And what we want to do is to figure out OK, this line here projects back to be a vertical line in, um, in the yz plane. And so does this line here. It projects back to be a vertical line in the yz plane. What we need to figure out is, what about this line? That projects back to be some line here. And this, uh, this line here um, projects back to be a line in the yz plane. So we just have, we know that y is going to be between 0 and 2. So we've got those bounds. But now we need bounds on z in terms of y. Remember the equation for my surface, um, I want z as a function of y, so let me get z alone. z minus x minus y equals 0, so z equals x plus y. And along this line, if I want to find the shadow that it casts, along that line, this is where x is equal to 1. It's that forward edge, right? And the, and the upper bound on x is 1. So this is where x equals 1, so this line must be z equals 1 plus y. So that's that the equation of that line in the shadow of the surface that's cast when you project down the x-axis and look at the shadow in the yz plane. Um, now this line, this is the line that's, that's on the surface, z equals x plus y, but where x is equal to 0. So this is the line z equals um, z equals y. So we have for, if we look back here in the yz plane, we have that y is always between 0 and 2, and then the, the z, we have two parallel lines, right? For any value of y between 0 and 2, the z starts at the line y and climbs until it hits the line y plus 1. So my bounds on z are that z go, goes from y to y plus 1. So there's bounds on z, there's bounds on y that describe the domain of this function, and x equals z minus y. Those are the reason, that's the reason I'm going to integrate over. But what I need is a conversion factor that will take a little bit of area, a little patch of area in the shadow or in the domain, and convert it to have the correct area on the actual surface. So I need my conversion factor. When, when uh, x is a function of z and y, then we just take the two partials, g sub z and g sub y, square them, add them, and add 1 underneath the square root. There's my conversion factor. So the partial with respect to z is 1, so we get 1 squared is 1. The partial with respect to y is negative 1, and negative 1 squared is 1. And then we have our 1 here, so the square root of 3 is my area conversion factor. Okay, so We've got our area conversion factor. Now what we need to do is to, is to get um, our normal. So Because we want to go around this surface, adding up f dot n, checking the alignment between the fluid flow, which is given by bold f, uh, dotted with the normal. So we're seeing how much does the flow tend to go perpendicular or through 
the surface, we're going to add that up d sigma. So I've got f, I've got the area conversion factor that I need, I've got bounds for my region, I just need to get my normal. Well, we said that the normal was going to be the gradient. If we look at this as, um, as a level set, we have z minus x minus y, right? So the great, um, so the great z minus x minus y equals zero. So that's the level set of this function. So the gradient of this function will be perpendicular. And what we get here is partial with respect to x is negative one. Partial with respect to y is negative one. And the partial with respect to z is one. So there's a normal. I need to make a unit normal. So I'll divide that by its length. And the length of this is, of course, the square root of three. So now I have my unit normal ready to set up my integral here in over the shadow or the domain here in the yz plane. So I'm going to be integrating um, from 0 to 2 in y and from y to y plus 1 um, in z. Get my vector field, which I'm in the yz plane, so I'm going to know y and z, and I just have to determine what the x value will be. But I know that the x value on the surface is given by this equation. So solving this, I get x equals z minus y. So x squared, so we've got y, and the y component of the vector field is x squared, but x is z minus y. So we'll have z minus y squared, and then we'll have um, z. So I've rewritten my vector field f in terms of locations in the domain where I'm doing the integral. And then I've got my normal. So my normal was this. It was negative 1, negative 1, 1, divided by the square root of 3 to make it a unit normal. And then I've got my area conversion factor. So d sigma is the same thing as square root of 3 times a little patch of area dz dy. So the integral I need to do is the integral from 0 to 2 and from um, y to y plus 1 of, let's see, the square roots of 3, those cancel, and if I do this dot product, I get negative y um, minus z minus y squared and plus z, and that's the integral that I need to do, dz dy. Now, just in the interest of saving time, I'm just going to go ahead and set this integral up in maple. I've got an integral inside an integral. The thing I need to integrate is y minus z minus y squared um, plus z. So first I'm going to integrate z. z goes from y to y plus 1. Um, and then I finish that first integral. And then once that integral is done, it depends on y. So I integrate from y equals 0 to 2. OK. And I get the integral is equal to 1 third, which from the last time we did it, the integral was also equal to 1 third. So that's kind of a nice little confirmation that we can set it up in different ways and still get the same answer.